So now let's move to the relapse patient setting. I think we've alluded to the idea that uh, uh, alluded to the idea that uh, relapse disease can be more challenging. Uh, Andre, what's the typical way that a patient presents? And then I'm going to ask Steve uh, to talk a little bit about how deciding uh, on a therapeutic approach. So the patient, you know, are these patients, Andre, that you are monitoring closely that come in with a, a scan finding or a new node? Are they coming in with rip roaring disease? What's your typical yeah, pattern? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a very good question. And again, a big spectrum, not surprisingly. And it makes it very difficult because we, we just talked about, illustrated well, the heterogeneity of management of these patients in the real world or even on trials. So you have patients who have very different types of treatment in a very heterogeneous disease, so in a very different evolution. So you're going to have present, patient and present just because they have a few nodes on a routine recession study. And you're going to have on the opposite someone who has seen five lines of therapy in the community, quote unquote, and then comes to see us with an accelerated disease, uh, really where we are think more about analog transplant. And now we have the study with a CAR T cell that no, this patient could be candidate if they fail ibrutinib. But the mechanism of resistance clearly over time, particularly with cytotoxic patients, have very short response and survival once they fail our chemotherapy. And then definitely high-dose therapy and other transplant doesn't help those patients. And then the, the other situation is the patient that presents with minimal disease that you monitor, or we talked about colonoscopy before, because they had a history of mental cell, they get a repeat colonoscopy and there's minimal disease there, and you can probably watch this patient for quite so I agree that there's a, a whole spectrum of, of um, presentation. So Steve, how do you approach a relapsed mantle cell patient? And uh, you know, my guess is that if they're asymptomatic with minimal disease, you may watch them, but there's a re rationale to start something easy sooner perhaps, how, and, and obviously the I'm, symptomatic patient. I mean, there is a spectrum, right. but if you look at every study if, uh, you know, out there on mantle cell, patients that have had one or more relapses have a shortened survival that's, that's uh, um, regardless of what therapy is being studied. For example, you look at the data for patients who get ibrutinib in first relapse versus patients that have had more than one mm -hmm. line of therapy, and it's hugely different. I think mm -hmm. there was an abstract at this meeting, in yes. fact, that, mm -hmm. that, showed, that right. so, so showed that. So um, I think that once these patients have seen chemotherapy agents, now I don't know if this is true if you were to start with ibrutinib, mm -hmm. But I think this is a genetically unstable disease. Once these patients have seen chemotherapy and they relapse, it tends to be fairly aggressive. And if you study them, you'll find acquisition of mutations like P53. I've seen double hits. Right. People get a, mm -hmm. uh, sure. uh, a MYC translocation um, sure. when they recur. So, um, so the benefit of, of like the auto transplant stuff, I mean, all the treatments I say are palliative, but there is a benefit to the auto transplant up front or intensive therapy up front because you have a long progression free survival. And in fact, when you look at the literature, basically all studies that have long term follow up, you know, are, are basically retrospective studies because the future is changing so quickly sure. in terms of new agents, there's a benefit to being progression free regardless right. that they don't show overall survival benefit. So I think try to be aggressive up front when they recur though, um, you know, it, you're likely to be stuck with a patient that's going to have a bad prognosis disease. Um, sometimes you'll get the same disease back if you're lucky. Um, but if it's aggressive, I tend to want to put those patients on trials, like the um, CAR-T trial that uh, Andre was mentioning. Um, if it's somebody that has a P53 uh, mutation and I can get them into remission with a kinase inhibitor, you know, and they have a, they're young and they have a donor and a candidate for a transplant, that would be the one situation where I might uh, consider doing uh, an allotransplant. I wouldn't do it in first remission in most patients in mantle cell, but in, in, in that particular situation, I would consider it. Um, so have you been pretty much giving everyone ibrutinib as their second line therapy? We also have bortezomib, lenalidomide, chemotherapy uh, well, no, regimens. I, I don't, How I, do you, I, I don't, outside of trial? Outside of trial, yeah. yeah. I mean, trial is ideal actually sure. for these patients because sure. we need guidance. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, I would say that I, was a great fan of lenalidomide and lenalidomide rituximab in these patients um, with less aggressive um, um, relapse presentations, and still am. Mm -hmm. um, I also use ibrutinib as well, and I guess I kind of do it by toxicity. If somebody has one and they're having side effects, I may use the other. But I, if the presentation at relapse is not of, a, of an aggressive disease with, mm -hmm. with a lot of mutations and, and additional uh, um, findings, then I'll go to a non-chemotherapeutic approach right. like ibrutinib or um, lenalidomide rituximab. 
John, John, your approach in the relapse patients? I'm right on board with Steve. Mm -hmm. uh, in those patients, I typically will go to a kinase inhibitor, and mm -hmm. typically I'll go to ibrutinib. There are patients, of course, that you might want to stay away from ibrutinib in as a first choice. Right. Those might be patients with underlying structural heart disease, somebody who has risk for AFib or has AFib or on an anticoagulant perhaps, so I might choose Revlimid for those. But of course, I think we now have acalabrutinib, right? Yeah, we do. Well, we'll, we'll come back to that in a second. We'll come back to that in a second. So. Yeah, but I think, yeah. I think you know, th these are tremendous options for patients that we just didn't have yeah, very long ago. That's why you want that first remission with these patients to be as long as possible because the future right. is going to be better and better.